in July, He's getting one of his strengths. He's the Warlock Hunter, I guess. <laughs> He's going to be yeah. tasked to hunt down the Warlock, even maybe hunt down the Lone Druid. Savage Roar does not Ten help against remain. Bat Rider. If you get the, the, once you get the lasso on the hero, if you Savage Roar him, that's helping the Bat Rider get back Five faster to his team, remain. theoretically. Maybe prevent him from using a four staff, but he's a, a good hero to be running against the Lone Druid typically, and that's partly why IG were banning it those last two games. Obviously, the third ban here is from IG. Between game one and game two, it's been very, very similar, really, the heroes that they've targeted. And uh, well, let's switch it up. Dog fights, as we kind of talked about, about after the end of game two. Didn't really have the, the heaviest of impact at the start, but the Pudge certainly was a nuisance uh, in the late game when BKBs were out and he had that dismember. Uh, to, to hold them between Matt and of course as you mentioned before you know dogfights most of the time he is a hero and, and player that, that can dominate in the early game it's one of his strongest and uh, I cheat uh, can't take the bat away so I'll take the pudge away instead Radiant team next ban from IGV help protect the bat rider take away like a good offlane not necessarily team fight but like kind of initiating type hero they're Ricky ban they're really targeting dogfights yeah. with these bands here in the second stage Challenging him to to go outside of his comfort zone, perhaps. Uh, see what he's going to play. He has played the Bounty Hunter sometimes, but he's more well known for his Ricky and, of course, the Pudge. We saw the Earth Spirit earlier. He's been playing a bit of Earth Spirit, but I wouldn't consider him one of like the amazing Earth remaining. Spirit players uh, in China or just in general. Like He plays it decently, but Five he doesn't really shine remaining. or stand out on the hero. And if anything, IG may want to take that for themselves and take it away from him and play it worried about Radiant that being one of his hero picks. picks. And you know what's been left in the OP Tinker. Yeah, it I has. mean, could it's, could they go for? I mean, there, there is the Bat Rider to help bat, hunt him yeah. down. But the if OP he's, uh, yeah. well, I mean, leave it because there's a, yeah. they have bats, so they're like, all right, are we still worried about it? Maybe not. Dire but team pick. We'll see. There's the Earth Spirit block pick as well as like I mean, here IG can play pretty decently themselves. So dogfights here are pull getting limited through the the bands and picks. Oh, we'll see if they, they grab him anything now, just in it's case someone else get knocked out, gets knocked out of the last ban from his uh, repertoire. They, they're still fine sticking, in my mind, sticking with the Shadow Fiend. Even Tinker's better than Shadow Fiend. I think the Shadow Fiend drafts have been Reserved. for IG. Okay. And even though they lost game two, it was very much because of the team fight and because Warlock Rock kept keep, like disabling him through BKB. So I think it's now that dark. IG have Warlock themselves, the Shadow Fiend pick still team works team. for them. Um, Hmm, Disruptor picked up, interesting. Giving them some extra catch and chase. IGV are going to be really about finding pickoffs and getting kills this game. With the bat, the Disruptor, even Jug, kind of a, an aggressive fighting hero in some ways Ten as well. Yeah, and of course, yeah, that, that bat Disruptor combo very Five nicely. Uh, you're back getting the vision for Disruptors to get those long range glimpses off, and something that, that is going to help them try and catch down Burning and uh, put him out of position. Invictus Gaming, what do they want to take? Will they take the SF once again, as we've been mentioning? Do they try for the Tinker? I mean, with the Disruptor there as well, that's another real kind of hero that I guess puts you off wanting to play the Tinker. Hmm, yeah, I think they may want to save their mid for last. Yeah. Like we haven't been seeing teams use that last pick to like secure mid lane or last, but this is to me the game where you want to do that. There's enough heroes between Shadow Fiend, Tinker, and like the rest of the conventional mid pool that. I don't see a reason to rush the mid pick here. You don't know what you're going to be up against in lane. You don't know what the other support's going to be. Uh, you may be Batrider as a support. We saw the Chinese teams experimenting with four position Batrider and uh, running other offlaners. So to me, pick an offlaner here is perhaps the best idea. Get like a, a Darkseer type hero uh, and then save that mid for later. But we'll see if IG have the, the same idea or thinking something else. Yeah, I think, again, certainly Darkseer could be could be nice. We saw them obviously last game ignore Darkseer and, and get high the axe instead. Uh, but even though we had a really fast time farming at the start, it, it felt like a lot of those crucial kind of early mid-game calls just didn't really happen. He, he didn't really manage to find the, the start off for, for for the kills that IG needed to find to, to start to get the momentum. Yeah, they felt like they were always, like the carries were always just trying to farm and play kind of passively and as a result earth spirit was just kind of like twiddling his thumbs like guys i'm, I'm ready to go roll in yeah. do some stuff but the rest of the team is like eh, i'm just gonna hit some creeps sanking perhaps a more aggressive option this game that will give him a, a bit more fighting power than the axe who just wanted to farm the jungle i don't think we see an iron talent sanking we've seen two very greedy jungling approaches from high first on the centaur Five then more recently on the axe this time around sanking i mean you can iron talent you can jungle but 
more likely we see him look to contest the lane and play a bit more uh, active in this game. And again, one of those heroes that in game two, IG Vitality, they did ban the Sand King. So they, they were a little worried about it. Vitality picking up the Weaver. And it's again, we know that they can, but well, both of the heroes, uh, both of the players can play the Jug. Uh, we've seen them both play actually in the, the safe lane. I mean, the question is, is, does this mean the Jug's going mid, the Weaver's going in the safe lane? Or could this be some sort of Weaver Disruptor well, support duo? I think more likely we'll see the mid Jug. Yeah. Uh, but I guess there's some flexibility if they feel like Jug gets a really bad matchup based on the last pick. They may send, Reserve I guess, time. what, that right in mid, or like you say, Weaver support and then pick it mid as... Or they won't get to... They have to pick their hero before they see what IG gets, so... Yeah, the, the flexibility mostly is like Weaver, playing a Weaver mid, but that is kind of less than optimal. Jug doesn't have too many terrible matchups. So like, there's losing no. matchups that Jug has, but he doesn't lose them that Ten badly. They're normally at least more. playable and acceptable. Well, the Chen's going to be banned Chen. out, so oh, definitely. Like that would have been a good pick. Yeah. Thinking that it, it, it is going to be the cause from Weaver Batrider and Jug. Yeah. So we'll see what they go for instead now. Ten hmm. seconds, yeah, I mean they're thinking it's going to be a support last pick from the IG Vitality side. And for IG, there's the Tinker Band, so they say, look, we'll Dying give you another Shadow Fiend, we just don't want to verse the Tinker. There's the Bounty mention. it was Radiant something that Dogfight does play every now and then instead of the Ricky, even if Ricky is preferred. Gives them some roaming presence, and a hero that can disrupt any greedy jungling that we've seen High go for in his offlaners, so... Yeah, I'm very very nice with, with the Disruptor. Ten for the, uh, for the track into Glimpse. It's going to be even easier yep. to catch out heroes. And makes it hard for the Sand King to play around as well. You know, once he hits that six, normally wanting to use the Sandstorm to duke it up. But with the track on him, it's going to be very hard for him to evade IG Five Vitality. IG, what do they want to get for OP? They are going to get in the uh, OD this game. So not the SF. OD instead. And uh, do you prefer this this time around? Gives them a save. Yeah. Like they've had Venge the last two games with the swap saves. This game around, they had the Warlock instead. So... They took out their, like, supporting utility uh, hero and replaced it with a big teamfight hero in the Warlock. I mean, I guess Warlock has a heal, but he's more about the Rock and the, the Fatal Bonds and the mid to late game teamfights. So the OD kind of fills that gap that they replaced. Um, it gives him, even though he's a carry, but he is a carry that can save a teammate and uh, buy some extra time using that Astral. So I like that they go for something with a bit more uh, well-roundedness rather than, like, just another single target, right-click carry hero in the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, I think it's a good option. Overall, though, do you think that uh, do IG have it to, to come back uh, from that game two loss, or a vitality going to just ignore the fact that they lost that one game and just have this amazing streak kind of continue overall in terms of their win-loss ratio? This qualifies. Yeah, I mean they had a great eight-game win streak. If you're looking at like the tiebreakers and all that, but. I think all in all, IG's proven that they're the stronger team. I mean, they had the better group stage record. They went 7-2, and two, I believe, to IGV's 5-4. and four. Um, IG's just been yeah. a more consistent team in this event. Even if IGV's had some moments of brilliance, like they were the team that qualified uh, for Star Ladder and stuff, but they, they look pretty pretty lackluster at the Star Ladder LAN event. So um, I, I, I favor IG. I think their draft has made the right adjustments, taking the Warlock away and then last picking the OD. Uh, to make up for the fact they don't have the Venge swap save. I think they've got a very well-rounded draft, and I'd g definitely give IG the edge here, although we'll see. This is These games tend to kind of turn into, like, a Game 3 decider in a qualifying match. You're gonna, it's going to become a lot more kind of passive, a lot more tense. Both teams are going to be uh, doing everything they can not to make any mistakes and just playing overly cautious uh, as a result of that. So that kind of will turn this into, like, a more farming late-game oriented affair, which is where... Heroes like Batrider can do very well late. Jug Weaver, you've got a good late game duo for IGV, so definitely a, an interesting draft from both sides. And of course, this game, Paparazzi to the safe lane once more, but he's taking the Weaver. Cicada back on, on that Jug. I mean, I'm sure we won't see the Shadow Blade this game, will we, God? I, I mean, it, maybe it's. Uh, never know. Would you say it's more acceptable on a mid lane Jug than a safe lane? Uh, rushing it that early? No, no, it's about not. the same level, yeah. maybe maybe a little more. Okay. I'm not sure. You've got a Weaver on your team, so you've got an Invis. Getting a Shadow Blade with Weaver on your team that. makes the Shadow Blade worse as well, so I I doubt we're going to see that. But 
who knows, I guess. We've seen some funky stuff. Baron is heading top. Are we going to see a lane swap here? It looks like IGV is going to swap up in July up top and send the Weaver down bottom for an aggro lane. Okay. Not I mean, potentially what, putting sure pressure on well burning at the good. start is... But he has got yeah, that it's... really strong backup of, of Earth Spirit and Warlock in the lane. The yes. Begins. And what this does is it, it helps the mid lane for IGV oh, because nice. Earth Spirit has to now secure bottom rather than True, yeah. mid. Like, I think ideally Earth Spirit wants to be harassing mid and helping the OD out in his lane, but by going for this aggro lane, Earth Spirit gets stuck bottom, which means Bounty Hunter can get a lock done at mid. So we're going to see uh, a lot of harass on the OD. And I think Jug will likely, at least early on, win his lane and have a CS advantage over the OD because of this Bounty Hunter's pressure. And Dogfights has a poor man shield, so OP cannot trade hits with him. Got the sentry down, but yeah, as right, you mentioned, he's it, not going to win that. Yeah, it doesn't matter that he can see him with the build that Dogfights has. So, yeah, these side lanes going to be interesting. This top lane, I mean, in July, actually taking huge amounts of harassment here, which is a little bit out of the ordinary, yeah. you would think, in this Bat versus Sand King matchup, but he just took a hell of a lot of damage. He's not got any cells. And Pap, what the hell is going on? He's dead! I can't quite believe it! This top why lane. Is, why has he been jungling? This guy's this guy's an offlane god. He what? doesn't need a jungle. I mean, what? That that shouldn't happen. Should, I mean, bringing that bat down that low and then the carry just teeping in to die solo to this offlane. Uh, yeah, you know, I had already blown a lot on trying to bring down the bat. I mean, that not the start that IGV wanted, and at the same time, mid lane, Cicada being chased down by Open Boris. They won't quite finish him off, but. That is not how they wanted the lanes to kick off IGV. Yeah, that's that's worrying. Uh, <laughs> and they're, they're, I'll see if it looks like Weaver is going to go back top. Batrider can either fall back to the jungle or go bottom now. Um, not sure what the option's going to be. I don't really think he can get much farm down bottom against the uh, the lone druid with the warlock support. So likely he'll just try and jungle up his tranquil boots maybe get a few more levels can look to gank a lane or go back bottom with like a level four level five but yeah laning stage is not good enough to a very hot start here so <laughs> looks like dogfights is gonna reside in this one lane i maybe like to see him even give bounty like a solo lane just so we can get his level six and stuff yeah i mean i feel i feel between the two of them is they're not going to be able to get much done surely dogfights and and super I against these two. Burning and Q should be A-OK. -okay. I mean, we're seeing dogfights already just getting heavily punished as he tried to come in and trade a little bit, but the poor man's shield isn't going to help him against Burning's harassment. Yeah. Earth Spirit's even kind of making a move down bottom lane a little bit as well, although he has been spotted. Dire Ward uh, is on top of him, so unlikely we see this amount too much. He has the, He's the one with the dust. He's the one looking to kind of play uh, hunt the bounty hunter, and if he can find him with the dust, that likely can lead to a kill, but Burning, he's going to have to back off. He's playing a little bit too aggressive here in this 1v2 scenario. Yeah, for sure. They're going to strike. We'll bring him down low. But yeah. He should be here. Uh, got... Q's got Shadow Word back on. Yeah. To top Tango him up. Shadow Word. Yeah. He'll be able to heal himself up. This is still pretty effective trading for him. He's, he's got more regen than IGV do. There's just one Tango left on Bounty, one Tango left on Disruptor. They do still have the Shrine, which they can use, but... They, they pop that shrine, they come back, and, well, we've got a full HP alone Druid who will, again, her trade hits with you, and then you get low, and he gets healed up. So, uh, I think this is a, a losing battle for IGV, which is where I, I feel leaving the bounty to solo this lane to get level 6 faster may be the best bet. Um, as much as you pick the bounty hunter to be active on the early game, like, that plan is already kind of backfired. Like, he didn't really achieve what he'd hoped for. Uh, the Earth Spirit roll in mid kind of negated his early presence. Jug isn't really winning his lane, so... Perhaps you just focus more on playing greedy farming. Batrider's doing just that with his play, so... I guess the Batrider may be heading bottom. That, that's, if you want to contest this bottom lane, you need to bring in July. That, to me, is the thing that needs to change. Yeah, it certainly looks like he may be making his way over there. And the mid lane at the moment, even CS between the two of them. Cicado, of course, as we saw, did have that nice little bit of a boost at the start to make sure he was able to keep on par with OP thanks to, to Dogfight's presence. Yeah. Uh, still, that, that bit of a start on the top lane really hurting IGV. Paparazzi has now managed to catch up. He's nearly hitting onto the level three. High, though, certainly with the uh, the stronger half in this lane. And Paparazzi does have to be careful. I mean, with what Weaver's not too great attack range. 
Uh, if I gets close enough for the Burrow strike, and he gets the extra point in it, he can certainly trade harassment and does have that sentry placed down, of course, ready for if Paparazzi comes too close for comfort. Yeah, it's not really a lame Weaver wins 1v1. Uh, perhaps if it's 1v1 from the start and you get yeah. pulled, like, a, I guess you don't need the sentry because he's not going Sandstorm, but theoretically you get a value point in Sandstorm just to get rid of the uh, the Beatles. So that's something High might consider at level 4 or level 5. Um, but we'll see if that's going to be the case. Looks like for now IGV, some connection issues or something. They've uh, DC'd on in July and looking to stabilize. But yeah, I think High's going to do very well. He's got the poor man, so like, and he's soon to have like the the tranquil boots if he wants to. So he's he's straight up winning his lane. Weaver is lower level than him, so uh, if anything, Sanking's just better off when he's trading hits. Has four tangos still. Will, will be a tough lane for Paparazzi. I'm not really at this point. There's like no lane where IGV are really winning. There's lanes where they're doing like okay and acceptable. Like mid definitely isn't a lost lane, but tops a lost lane. Bottom is likely to become a lost lane because Burning's going to just farm and zone heroes out of the lane with his bear. Uh, he's only level 2 for now, so at least there's no real kill threat until he gets the entangle, but I think IGR are going to walk away with this laning stage unless something special comes out from the bat rider or the, the bounty hunter. Well, it looks like in July having some internet issues potentially as uh, so we're just waiting for him to reconnect. One of the downsides because these games we we're not too sure what's being said it by Super. Yeah, no clue whatsoever. Do they have Chinese mo admins? I wonder because I, th I thought it was the same. It's always the same. I was gonna say I don't think they do, do they? It's yeah. How do you admin a Chinese game if no one speaks English? Yeah, I mean, how do you know? Imagine one or two players. Do how do you know if the B they're not BMing? You know what I mean? You know, there's yeah. that BM rule, isn't it? You, you can't smack talk the opponent, otherwise you get DC'd or something. I guess I mean, in the regions, you know, like in South America, they can BM in, in Spanish that's or in true. Portuguese and the admins wouldn't know. Yeah, I guess that's that's the key, really. Just make sure you taught your BM in non-English yep. and you could yeah, just yeah. get away with it. I, mean, I guess you could do that in Europe and stuff, too. Like Yeah, yeah, any, any non-English. French non or something, yeah. just start swearing in French. I went to an international school. That was the key of getting away in class with swearing. Did it in your, your some weird foreign language. So, one thing Dota's good at teaching people is, is definitely how to swear in foreign languages. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, I'm sure if you ask any pro player with, you know, especially ones that have been around a few different teams, they know uh, a huge variety of, of the curse words from around the world. But we're back on, back in, in July returns. And uh, as we saw in the bottom lane, of course, dogfight sounds super well. Let's get back. They'll shrine up within July. He's now turned up to this bottom lane. As expected, and we'll see if they're uh, they're kind of able to slow down burning a little bit now with this bat rider in presence. This next couple of minutes at bottom lane is quite important, I feel, just because they've got no shrine. How they trade hits, they can pressure burning. They did rotate disruptor off the lane. It looks like oh he's just stacking, or oh, he missed his stack, so he rotated off just to go for a stack and come back. But he missed his stack, which is unfortunate for the bat rider. Uh, likely going to come back bottom lane. They've got good vision around bottom, which is where they want to stay, stick around here and keep pressuring the lane, but it's proving to be fairly tough for them. Right, for out seat. Trying to harass her a high there with a the Shikuchi, but instantly back in with a burrow strike. Bottom lane in July on the front line. Super and dogfights just behind. Dogfights will be able to get the pullover and uh, he get himself a bit of that experience as, he, as we talked about earlier. Just really want to try and get himself a good timing on that level six. Absolutely crucial that they get the track this game as soon as possible. Top lane, Borax has That's moved across, close. and between the two of them, they're looking to potentially set up something on Paparazzi, and they certainly can kill this Weaver if they get a lock. Yeah, they've only got the, the stun. They don't have the silence just yet, but that may be enough with a roll. Oh, there we go. There's the kill bottom. That's what we've been kind of talking about. IGV need to start doing well in this bottom lane. It certainly is. It's a kill, not necessarily the kill, the big kill that they wanted. Burning is that one. Dogfights is going to try and chase him down with a Thunderstrike. It will bring him down low, but Q's there in time with the Shadow Word Hill. Top lane, Borax and Kai do end up going in. And as expected, with a setup from Borax and a follow from from Hai, there's no chance of a, of a level 4 Weaver getting himself out of that sort of play. And the kill at bottom was still just the support. Yeah. So they get the Warlock, but Burning... Uh, he stays alive and Warlock just TPs back in to heal him. So this is kind of what we talked about, trading trading hits and trading blows with uh, a Warlock 
plus carry lane is not really efficient trading because they're always going to have that sustain. They've got more tangos, they've got more heals. The shrine's already been used on the dire side. In July's got tranquil boots, I guess, to kind of even things up a little bit. But uh, at this point, Burning's Harass is going to start getting harder and harder to deal with. But the Orb of Venom and soon to be level 5. Once that entangle comes out on the bear, you can't really stick around too much. So seems like they're focusing elsewhere now with a three-man rotation towards mid. Uh, eyes on OP. Dogfire's looking to set up. And with the Blade Fury as well, OP will have the defensive Astral. TP's coming through as well, and he looks like he's going to be fine. There'll be a glimpse back onto Borax, but just his presence uh, was enough to really hold IGP back from chasing down OP. So OP will be kept safe in this mid lane, despite the three-man move from Vitality. Yeah, just, just throwing a boulder smash before he gets glimpsed out of there too to guarantee the OD safety. No, he didn't even damage. He's got double null boots. Close to oh, it looks like he may be going for the Midas. Not that the treads will have to wait and see, but he's fairly tanky with 900 hit points and the uh, the astral to save himself. CS across the board certainly favoring IG. You can see in this oh, top yeah. lane how much high he's finding 36 CS. Paparazzi only sitting on 16, really struggling to find that much at all against this sanking lane. Bottom lane burning coming forward. There's a bit of a wraparound from dog fights. He's trying to go for in July. Savage Roar will hop back to them. Didn't clip the uh, Super and Super tries to go for the body block. But again, Q with the level 2 Shadow Word. The heal's too strong as Burning will be kept alive. And IGP just don't have the damage between the three of them to take down a lone Druid when he's got this backup from the Warlock. Top lane, meanwhile. Paparazzi, they're trying to go on him. with the, This time they've got the Silence. They can epicenter and see if they hit the Barrow Strike. All it takes is one Barrow Strike and he's dead. Barrow Strike into Boulder Smash into Geomagnetic Grip. With an epicenter, Paparazzi is 100% dead. He cannot get Burrow Strike, or he's he's gone done for. Yeah, has to has to keep his distance, and of course, that is going to mean it's 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 going to continue to be incredibly hard for him to get any sort of farm from this lane. I mean, and, and not receiving any backup, it's still the pressure trying to be applied by IGV on this bottom lane with dog fights, eyeing up Q and burning. Top lane, Paparazzi he's just continuously farming with Chikuchi. Yeah, getting <laughs> like, himself in and out. In. Takes a CS with Shikuchi and then backs out before a Barrow Strike can come out. He's seems he's at least well aware that the Earth Spirit is was nearby. Perhaps he doesn't know Earth Spirit's left yet, but uh, Paparazzi's play definitely is suggesting he knows that that combo with Earth Spirit plus Sanking will kill him, even if he's got Shikuchi up, even with the raindrops. So even with the time lapse, he's not going to get time lapse off if he's silent. So problem is the end result is his tower is taking a lot of damage. High is doing a perfect job of if you can't get the kill, I'm going to get your tower. And Earth Spirits is going to rock back up. So here we oh, go. Got him. And that's the thing. As soon as they get that burrow strike, that's a guaranteed kill. IGV will TP in reaction. Can they get a kill in return? They're looking towards high. And holding on to it. Sandstorm's there as well. He actually tries for the TP out, but I'm instantly in July. With the lasso, holding him down. Now with four stacks on him, high. Does have a burrow strike. But five stacks, he's almost certainly going to be run down. Does have the sandstorm, tries to duke his way out of it. But with a thunder strike on him, he's down. And that was a very ballsy TP attempt. Straight under a, a level six bat. And it wasn't like he only just hit level six. He was uh, level six way before any of the waves came through. Yeah, he was hoping... Sometimes bats don't level up lasso, I guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's what, what he's, he's banking hoping on. For. Yeah. He, he wants to make sure, like, he's just, like, banking on, like, all right, maybe this bat hasn't leveled up lasso. Let's just go for it and see what happens. Um, but he had a borrow strike, and that's where I feel like he could have at least borrowed away and then gone for the TP, or you, like, borrow the bat rider and then TP. But I think he was a little bit short mana, because after the TP, he couldn't borrow right away. He was, like, three mana short. So perhaps he did the math and was like, all right, if I borrow, I can't TP. I'm probably dying Radiant's if I borrow tower. because I'm slowed. So... It looked like maybe a kill regardless, but yeah, it, would, it was a bit odd. So how's our other lane doing? Still a big like lane win all across the board for our IG. And even though they killed the Sanking on the roof again, kills Paparazzi, he's done a lot of damage. That, that top T1 tower is getting incredibly low. And it looks like uh, Borek scouts out a fresh ward. Disruptor walks through the river, plants a ward on that cliff, and that's going to very quickly get dewarded by the Earth Spirit. Yeah, it looked like Borax. I, I wondered if he would maybe have gone for that kill attempt. I mean, they have the ward up on the high ground. They know there's not really much behind Super, but yeah, we'll let him be. Top lane at high did try and make a bit of a go there with the Borax strike. Mid lane is where the big, big kill attempt is going to happen. And in July, straight in there with the lasso into the Omni Slash. And in July, he's certainly making things happen with this flaming lasso. 
Yeah, doing it without the blink dagger, that's the important thing. I, if they had to wait and blink dagger, I think they were going to be in trouble. Didn't die at top super from the tree. Denies the T T1 tower from sanking, slowing down. Oh, he still got the blink dagger, but slowing down his follow up item, I guess you'd say. But uh, he's immediately TP'd mid with his blink dagger, ready to try and engage. He knows there's no lasso or omni slash. This could be a good fight. He wants to go him. straight in here. Who's he going to find? He goes in, will get the initiation onto the Batrider. Borax going forward as well. They've got the damage to take down in July. They'll turn towards Sakata, and with four of them there, they'll find a second. Making big things happen there with the perfect blink reveal on high. Yeah. He just instantly TP'd mid after getting the top T1 tower and picking up the blink dagger and. Disruptor's Tau Deny, not enough to stop Sankin getting the money he needed. Perhaps they thought they were safe with the Tau Deny, like, oh, maybe Sankin's not going to blink now, but 10 minutes in, blink dagger up. Is Sankin having a fantastic game? Top of the net worth charts, pressuring that tower. It does look like Dire Side want to go for a smoke here. They group up around the shrine, they smoke, but they're smoking into Warlock oh, Ultimate. Oh, and immediately in with the Burrow Strike and the Boulder Smash onto three, holding back IGV. They're trapped in the kinetic field. They're still going to the try rock. for the kill. Glimpsing back one. The rock is dropped, though. IGV, they have to run. They have to try and hide, but Injil is already down. Dogfight's in trouble as well as Borax rolls forward. They've lost the Sanking, but they've found two. Sakata can he even it out. Defensive Astral from OP, keeping his teammates alive. Sakata has to now run. They've trapped one in the Static Storm. Super, he's able to take down the Warlock. Can they get more as Paparazzi and Super looking towards OP and burning? Paparazzi had a tough time up top. The kills would be massive if he could get more. It's not going to be the case. So it ends up just being the two for two. A support and an offlaner for a support and an offlaner. Yeah, like, I think you're right for IGV. They obviously were expecting a, a better team fight, given that they were the ones smoking up and going aggressive. But considering how it started with that Burrow Strike and the Boulder Smash, and then Warlock just hit level 6, swoops in, hits a Chaotic Offering with a level 3 Fatal Bonds, I think that fight went as good as you could have hoped for, fighting into the big ultimate. And now you can look to I'll go again. Your... There's no rock. That's just been used. Uh, perhaps you consider uh, taking another team fight. Uh, with another smoke gank, but you also want to be careful not to chew through too many of your smokes early on. Uh, and even though there's no rock, there's still epicenter, there's soon to be uh, magnetized, there's other big ultimates for IG. The searching well, for dogfights, so they, they know he's in the neighborhood. And they're going to be able to find him. In fact, IGV themselves are the ones that want to fight. They try and cleanse map burning, but with the Savage Roar, it sends them back. The lasso's there from in July, though. They take down the Earth Spirit, and with a Flame Break back onto Q, they're looking for more track and the rundown from the bat. And I feel like we're starting to see why in July's Batrider is being banned out. It seems like he's yeah. just so good at getting the setup. And this is way before he has a blink. And it looks like, of course, he's going to be looking for the drums build, something that a lot of Batriders do like to prioritize, especially in a game where we're seeing how much he can get done without the need for that surprise initiation. And 1,400 gold for two supports, thanks to the track, is a pretty big deal. And that's uh, some nice skills. I even scanned the bounty. I think it was a bit risque of uh, IG to lurk around and continue farming even though they knew Bounty was there uh, on top of them they were like well maybe we bring in a dust and kill him maybe we try and use this information to our advantage but they they didn't have numbers there they didn't have the level six quite yet on Earth Street it was like one or two CS away and they didn't have the rock so it was ultimately not a fight that was going to go Dyer's too well for them and IG attack. Vitality were able to rotate in numbers to, to win the fight for themselves Oh, attack. they smoke up, but there's Radiant that mid ward from IGV. Sees it all. I know exactly that IG are going to go for some sort of a play heading down towards the bottom. Yeah, Sakata's keeping himself hidden in the tree line. Do IGV want to try and catch them off or, or on the back of this? That's the question. They, they are starting to head over, but in fact, they do end up getting caught out. Immediately just run to being initiated on. Yeah, Super actually somehow managing to keep himself alive. Finally goes down. The golem has been dropped. They've lost this Disruptor, but in return, here comes in July. Has the lasso on to Q. They've managed to take down two. High came in with a burrow strike, but he's had to burrow strike and run as he looks to chase down the Sand King. Magnetize as well will allow them to take a second in return. And maybe with the appearance of burning, they can find more. Sakata trying to run up to the high ground. Buyback from dogfights. He wants to try and help out the team. But Sakata's already down. Injury line Paparazzi may be in trouble as well themselves. They move forward. Did get the kill on the SK. Paparazzi will be able to Shikuchi out. But they will keep these two alive. And Injury Light is maybe even eyeing up the potential to catch down more. But already IG are tucking their tail and running. So overall, again, it feels good news for Vitality considering it was IG smoke. But they did buy back on dogfights. 
yeah, the buyback makes it a bit a bit tougher on them as far as their economy goes, but I like the idea of Bounty Hunter recognized that the fight was maybe going to drag out and then his buyback could really help his team out. Any kills they get is going to be track gold for them, uh, not to mention any kills uh, could be found because of him with the track, the bonus movement speed, so making sure his team come out on top and even though it hurts his farm a little bit, he's still, got, he's still in a pretty good place as a Bounty. So they followed up, they get a tower as well. Paparazzi has managed to recover after that very rough laning stage. Level 12 now has the Helm of the Dominator and is looking a whole lot better than he was five minutes ago. Got him. All right, straight in with the burrow stroke. Just a bit of harassment, no one else backing him up. Has to be a little careful himself with IGV wrapping around aggressively into Invictus Gaming's jungle. Tracks out from dogfights. And IGV just maintaining the space to push on Onto this bottom tower, they know that there's no chaotic offering. Epicenter magnetized for a bit of time. So they can get away with this tier two, and maybe even more. Oh, doubt. Ooh. That's that possible. I, th th I mean, that's the thing. You know, with Static Storm, the silence is actually hit in 0.1 second increments, which is why sometimes you know we see like the in Ember Spirit games where he gets glimpsed back and instantly remnants out. You do yeah. have that chance to do it. So if you queue up. I mean, he must okay. have just spammed the blink perfectly because that, unlike the spirit, you can't just. I don't know. He yeah, was very, I've, very I've quick on the fingers with that. I've personally never seen that before, but that's that's impressive. Now I know you can do that. Because I know with the Ember, if you time it right, it's also because the, you, the glimpse triggers as you're like uh, in your invulnerable uh, yes, motion. True. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. You can time it so that it's not even about getting it between the silence sticks. But that was just he just used the blink before he took any damage from the ultimate. Here we have another it. Pick off, another track kill. That Borax is going down. No way he can roll out of that one. <laughs> They'll take down another IGV. They're getting the track kills. Overall, the three net worth leaders, though, are all over on Invictus Gaming. But it's I'll very, very close. Their supports are, but I guess that's the track. The track gives money to everyone. It is an overall gold lead for the dire side, thanks to the, the track money and the, the spread wealth from the Vitality squad. But... I think ultimately you'd rather see your cores pulling ahead. I think that's where IG are like, well, even if we're even on gold, our cores are doing much better than our opponents, ODs, getting a lot of levels and farm with the Midas. He just needs to find a way to not get like caught as he was like in that sag storm. That last team fight could have gone so much better for IG if he managed to get the Sanity's Eclipse off, but he was just a little bit out of position, got caught in the silence, didn't get much of his spells off, and see if he can do better in these upcoming fights. You actually get the glimpse back onto Burning. High's going to jump over. Tanks over the Omni slash damage. They'll surround Sakata. Goes for the Blade through TP out. He's not going to make it though. Chaotic offerings drop. Jugs out. And they're going to look for more as well. High with a Burrow Strike onto Super. As IG, they'll get themselves the two here. Super's making them work for it. But the Blink forward and the Pincer to the back from High will secure the second. And uh, Q just... Great news for IT that he was just able to turn up in time and, and have that cancel through the Blade Fury TP. Well, they'll get towers off of this as well. It's coming at a, a cost perhaps with IGV in pushing out this top lane, recognizing that they aren't really able to defend, having lost two. They're going to give up the tower, but IG are coming to fight and defend up top. Yeah, they're looking to wrap around. These from Vitality. Yeah, quickly Perhaps out of there. Could have guessed with a boulder smash, but hey, he. It's not always, it's very unlikely he would have landed that one. I like that uh, Sanking's gone for this Yulta. Being able to get off this track is very important for a hero like Sanking, who wants to play this like hit and run style. He wants to he wants to start the fights with a blink virus strike, but then he also wants to be able to make sure he can get out of there, which once he's tracked is very hard to do because he can't rely on the Sandstorm. He also maybe can't get a second blink off, but the Yule's blink is fantastic for using the Yule's uh, to reset your blink time. So. A very useful item for him this game. And even transitioning into a Lotus Orb to follow this up. They're really trying to address this Bounty Hunter problem. Smoke time for IGV. In July ready to go with this Blink Lasso. Yep. I mean, rocks down, let's go fight. That's kind of the mentality. Fight around the long cooldowns. But IG's positioning on the high ground by their tier 3 tower. Often you see, this is where like maybe a, a, more, a newer player would get caught out. They'd be sitting behind their T2 tower and get caught by this smoke. But and pop, popping the drums, they really want to try and get the catch out. And they'll get it here with a glimpse back. Can they follow through? Burning's under the tower. Off the ultimate form is too tanky for them to go on. Yeah, it's too close to the tower too. Like they, they know there's, if that already gets a blink, he hasn't got four staff, so blink lasso doesn't get a force out. And you're committed to fighting underneath the tier 2 tower, again to a five-man uh, team fight. 
IGV being forced back here as IG continue to, to hold on this mid lane, lane tier 2. Burning, Maelstrom and Dragonlance complete on his own build. Roshan, of course, at the ready. I mean, do you think we're going to see the side try for the Roshan yet, or is it too risky on, on both sides because of the team fight potential of either side? Yeah, it's pretty risky. Neither team kills it quickly. There's no slaughter. There's no. I mean, Weaver's perhaps the the main good roaching hero with the swarm. Um, but I think because of IG's scary team fight, unless IGV yeah. win a fight first, they won't go roche. Or perhaps if like ultis are all down, like if Epicenter and the Kirok offering are used. But that Kirok offering just coming back up now. Warlock, ready to go once again. And this is where IG probably try and smoke up, try and take a fight. Yeah, very much the uh, the team with the edge around these team fight spells, assuming someone like Warlock doesn't get caught by a, a Batrider Lasso. And of course, interesting to see as well, Paparazzi with his build, uh, doing something that's not necessarily the standard with Weavers. It, the Dragonlance Helm into the Maelstrom, not feeling the need for the Lincoln Sphere, not feeling the need for uh, for the Desolator. And, uh, uh, can you see the reasons why this game? Um, the helm was like it's kind of a catch-up item. Like when you're having a rough game, helm's quite a good item because you can build it piece by piece, and then uh, the item is just pretty nice, safe, gives you good HP regen. The maelstrom is like cheap, cost-effective damage. He's come in but in July, they're quick with the lasso. In return, the border smash comes from the three. They drop the chaotic offering as well, but the static storm is trapped. Well, the bear and uh, high, but high, he's still able to walk off with the sandstorm and bow strike. Does get cleansed back into the mix of all. Again, another boulder smash to hold back dog fights, but they finished off the Warlock. They've got the track out onto OP. Sakata thinking about going for it. Hot Diffuser Blade charge on it. High, still alive somehow. Injulai continues to try and chase. Well, there's going to be Borax there with the backup. The Shrines are the ready. High, he's not going to use it though. He Yules is up. Surely he can't survive this one. He's been tracked up. Will finally get taken down as IGB pick up another track kill. They want to fight into the Kirok offering. That is impressive and, and well executed. Catching, wasn't the wall they caught, but still a good catch in the Sand King. Sand King, as long as he stayed alive, at no point did he use a single spell offensively. He used like two Burrow Strikes to try and save his life. He used his Blink and his Yules to try and save his life as well. He was never posing an aggressive threat. He's the one who's got a lot of farm, a lot of levels, and it's very important to land Burrow Strikes on the enemy. It just didn't get the chance to do so that fight. So without the Barrow Strikes, OD and Lone Druid can't really dish out that much damage because heroes just aren't being saved. IGV off the back of that very successful fight. Secure themselves to Roshan. Aegis is the hands of Cicada. Very close to having the Yasha complete. Over that defusal. And they'll head straight to the Shrine. Shrine up. As it goes though, regardless of these fights burning, and of course, OP are able to maintain their top spot on the net worth. I mean, we're seeing kind of across all three games this series, these two are very good at keeping the farm high, despite the conditions that they're put into. Yeah, that's that's been definitely a consistent uh, thread between these two games. Burning's always been very impressive on his low endurance, just whether or not the draft and the overall uh, playstyle has worked out for them well in this game. Looking a bit more promising for IG, although they are still got some issues to deal with. Namely, the, the pick-up potential of this Injulai Batrider has been so good so far. And once the 4 stuff comes up, it gets even better. IGV have such great catch between the Batrider and the Disruptor. The Bounty Hunter as, like, the scouting tool. He's not really a pick-off hero in terms of, like, being in a DPS himself. But he provides the vision they need to get the lassos, to get the glimpses. So, dogfight's very important for this draft to work. Well, they're sweeping across it. I don't know if they'll actually be able to find anyone. Dogfights uh, has a gem out on its way as well, so they'll be able to maintain control of the map. And uh, we'll get a ward down already, though. IG out of the neighborhood. And uh, I'm just kind of having eyes on burning to see where it goes. Okay, he went for the Hyperstone. So, similar to what we saw Pretty in game yeah. two, where he yeah. went for what the phase, Dragonlance, Mjolnir. Then did go for the Crystals into the Daedalus. We'll see if that's going to be the same situation uh, this game, or if he does feel the pressure to, to get that BKB first this time around. The only Mjolnir with the Static Trap can do a lot of damage. These early fights before people actually have too many items, so definitely a dangerous item, but IGV are ready to force the fight. They've been threatening high ground here with the Aegis on Jug. You can just walk up, hit the tower, Blade Fury if he needs to, but seems, yeah, they're more intent on just taking the, the easy tier 2 tower. This, again, I mentioned, game 3 decider, when it goes to Kiev, teams will be playing a lot more cautiously as a result. ITV do need to be careful not to play, like, too passively. They are the team that has a lineup that wants to find pickoffs and play aggressive, so 
They definitely want to play a pretty fast tempo, but they're still going to be doing so in a cautious-ish way. Oh, well, hi. Can he play his way out of this one? He has a yields and a blink. Can he do any sort of fancy footwork? There will be the glimpse back. Let's get the chance to use up, but this time he's not blinking his way out of this one. The Static Storm's there to, to control him, and they'll take him down. And thanks to that respawn talent, though, only dead for 20 seconds. So he'll be right back up before IG's under any sort of threat. Yeah. Did not get it? Was it a track kill? Didn't, wasn't a, I'm not sure if it was a track kill or not. Uh, I, I, he used, it off with the yeah, yeah, he used off the initial track. I don't, yeah. I'm not too sure if he got the chance to get the second track out. Yeah. yeah. He maybe prevented a track kill, but... Ultimately, still a kill. Still some money going there and experience going their way, but not quite the outcome he would want. He's close to that Lotus Orb, level 15 now, on the Sand King, but it does feel like IG are somewhat bottled up in their own base. So while things were looking pretty good and they were like slightly ahead, if not even on gold, that could start to change around throughout this Aegis period. As IG Vitality get map control, they've got good wards kind of surrounding the Radiant base, scouting out pickoff opportunities as heroes leave the map, but on the side of IG, they're looking to take away that. They've got the gem on Sand King, they're trying to just de the map. He doesn't even be careful not to like go for those solo lane-pushing plays if he's got this gem, because losing the gem at this point could be very detrimental to IG. And there's Burning. Pushing off the Mjolnir. on it. Same time in return over on side of IG. Vsakada has the Manta complete. So it's going to be a little harder for the side of IG to lock down, you know, relying on kind of Borax's silence and initiation. Definitely ways that the Jug can play around it. Burning back to base though, as they just are very, very careful about how they push out on the map IG. They know that they need to be there, ready for any sort of a defense if IGV come in. And I mean, tier two on the top lane, definitely a tower that could be defendable for IG. But they have to be careful, because IGV, they're smoked up, leading the way around. IG keeping them way themselves up to the high ground at the moment. We'll see how far they come out, and they may actually just let this one go. Yeah, it's already low, so they won't try and come out for that one. Borax in the mid lane needs to be careful. Oh, yeah. The Aegis timer, like, 20 seconds away from expiring. If it was maybe closer to expiring, they perhaps would have considered it, but they won't even glyph it. They'll hold their glyph to the high ground in case they get picked off or something, for example, and just wait for another day. Sanking is still, like, poised in this bottom lane, trying to maybe catch a straggler, perhaps backdoor a tower or something, force a rotation back. He's dropped the gem off, so he doesn't have that anymore. Uh, and he'll let the creeps perhaps finish this tower off. Dyer's bottom tower yeah, there's the, the reclaiming of the Aegis. Lotus Orb Dyer's complete for SK. So they can certainly uh, try and keep these cores alive on the front lines. They're OP with the BKB, Hurricane Pike, having high with that Lotus Orb. Lots of ways that they can allow OP to stand yeah. on the front lines and get the damage out. There is a fair bit of physical, though, uh, from Paparazzi and, and Cicada, but course with the the, the full-out Mjolnir as well built up on the Weaver that's uh, a little bit invested in the magical that is gonna be the scan they know they know where they are who's gonna get the jump though high comes in finds the burrow struck on super they could take him out before he static storms that'll be pretty huge he uses himself up though to get the chance to try and play but OP BKBs takes down super they found one now OP turns towards dogfights the sanities comes down dogfights has to get himself out he doesn't have mana or health to play with but paparazzi he's starting to bring them apart this miona doing so much damage the boulder smash from borax though onto two that's going to be the jug down they'll turn towards the weaver he's silenced up can he get out no he's already used the time lapse ig getting a big win off the back of that fight taking down the jug and the weaver and borax hitting some fantastic setups as uh, indeed, as uh, I read apparently, I don't know if you knew this, but Borax did name himself after Jerax, as uh, I believe the original tag of this <laughs> man is Baboka, but he changed his yes. name in honor of him. Well, it's definitely a player to aspire to play like, I'd say. Jerax, the best Earth Spirit player and also, uh, of course, uh, the one of the best full position support players out there. So Baboka and Borax here yeah, doing some fantastic stuff. and. Well, IG going to back off after winning that fight there. That was, I think the the real issue for IG Vitality that fight was just in July's lasso target. It, it was one of those things where he just went on the first hero he saw, but it was a lone druid who he couldn't kill. He had no damage kind of supporting him. So it was kind of a wasted lasso. I think ideally he needed to find 
one of the team fight heroes. You need, if, if, if you're gonna lasso a hero uh, who doesn't die, it needs to be stopping them using spells. So if he lassoes like a Sand King or a Warlock, or even an Earth Spirit, if he lassoes the Earth Spirit there, even if he doesn't kill him, it just stops the silences and the stuns from coming out. And it would have been perhaps a bit better for his team, but ultimately you're fighting under a shrine as well. Like fighting underneath that shrine, once IG get to the high ground and have activate that shrine, it gets very difficult to, to sustain yourself when IG Vitality shoots. Yeah, we're seeing paparazzi as courses as well after the Mione getting that, that BKB queued up. And certainly a necessity. Uh, just uh, considering the amount of control that they have on IG. We saw as soon as he pops the first time lapse, he has to be so careful how he sticks around as they, they'll certainly be able to kill him off the second, second chance that he has. I was meant to have this. We'll see if IG look to reset once they get this rock back up. It's pretty close, 20 seconds away. I have the ability to do so. Man, Q is poor. He is... <laughs> Boots, Windlace, TP. This is one of the poorest Warlocks I've seen in a long time, but I guess that's the nature of versing these invis heroes forced by ob sentries for the team. And Earth Spirit actually has managed to get good farm. Yeah, with like the minus. Perhaps, yeah, maybe Borax is like, it's your turn, buddy. You, you start buying some wards. And let Q at least finish the, like the Ghost Scepter, the Force Staff, whatever it may be. I think it's too late to go for a Midas on Warlock. It's not going to farm it anytime soon, so you may as well just buy whatever cheap items you can get. Ghost Scepter seems alright, since it may save you against the Weaver, for example, but there is still a Diffusal up. Roche has respawned, and IGV are in there. Not afraid of the Ultimates. They, well, they should be afraid of the Ultimates, but they shouldn't be afraid because IG is showing their entire line at that bottom. Man, IGV taking this down with pretty incredible speed, so no way that IG can contest and they will just have to be content with taking a tier 2. But that is going to mean Aegis on Cicada. That's going to be pretty scary as IGV could be prepared to try and go for a high ground push. IG themselves already backing away, not looking for anything more than just the tier 2. Yeah. Feels like both Roches were, well I guess the first Roche it did require a, a fight first where the rock was used and IGV kind of won it, but that Roche was a bit too straightforward and easy for IGV considering that IG had their ultimates, were kind of ready to fight, they have the BKB on OD, they've got the Lotus Orb, they've, they've got some big items, so it's a bit surprising that they let that Roche get picked up, and I don't think IGV go for that Roche if IG are missing off the map, it's just the fact that they're showing themselves taking a tier 2 tower that, you know, they're like, well this is free, like there's no one who can really come and contest this, but game will slow down now, IG probably will look to just not really team fight into the Aegis, and I think IG also know like they've they've lost all their T2 towers, which not a good thing, but it also means that there's no objectives for IGV to take outside of tier threes. They can't take shrines, they have to go for the high ground push, and I think IG are perfectly happy defending high ground with Sand King, Warlock, Burst Spirit, all these heroes. They, their high ground defense is phenomenal, so IGV are gonna be pressed to achieve much with this Aegis, unless they want to put themselves in a risky position going for that high ground push. Absolutely, I'm a Borax as well. He's uh, certainly playing for the group, but I, I don't think he has helped out Q really at all. He's saving up for this Aghanim Scepter on the Earth Spirit, and nice. he's, he's doing fairly well on the ro road to it. Nearly hitting on to 3,000. Bottom lane, high of course, he, he's just consistently been hiding in the trees, jumping out, and skipping the creep waves. So that attempt to push from Vitality when it comes through is going to be even more difficult, and you've already talked about how hard it, it's going to be in the first place. So with, with lack of creeps, their window to actually get something done on the aggressive is it's just going to get smaller and smaller with plays like this happening. Yep, they're desperately looking for a pickoff. They're close to finding one, but nope. Opie's out. Four staff blink. He gets out of there just in time before the Batrider catches up to him. And that was a drum charge used the last... Not like the end of the world running out of those drum charges, but it would have been uh, nice to have found that kill using it. A build for burning. Of course, did prioritize that BKB and uh, we'll be going for that Daedalus as we saw him pick up in game two. And uh, we certainly saw how much damage that does grant him. And IGV will have to be incredibly careful about that. It's just the amount of control that IG have. You know, Chaotic Offering, the Burrow Strike, Earth Spirits combination. If they're able to hit it off and Burning sat there on the back lines, it's it's going to be a scene that we're all too used to seeing when a lone druid's in play, and is a, is at this amount of farm at this stage of the game. The high ground siege is really reliant on in July finding a pickoff. Like he's yeah. got to find that lasso, and there is counterplays available. Like he's got a BKB, but even with the BKB, want to commit the rock to stop him pulling that hero deep out of the base. You can do so. 
Looks like there's only one... Yeah, there's only one four stuff on this dire side, so just the Batrider, you can't get that secondary pull, like... Which maybe something Dogfights considers after some of his follow-up items, but... I'm not sure it's a necess necessity. The bigger item coming is Super Zag Scepter. They're gonna look to take out the BKBs and some of these other pesky items from the from the mix with the Ag's Disruptor. Right, it's gonna be very, very close to having it as that last component. As uh Oh Borax actually uh changing his mind here. And uh isn't gonna be going for the Ags. He's queued up the Crimson Guard instead. Huh. Okay, looking to block that Omni Slash damage partially, the Swarm damage, yep. the uh, Weaver right-click. I mean, Weaver hasn't gone for, like, high right-click damage items necessarily, so this Crimson Guard becomes a little bit more effective as a result. Things like Manta Illusions. Just looking for that Team Sustain. We'll see if he sticks... Oh yeah, he has stuck to it. Yeah, he's, he's bought the pieces now. He's committed. He has got just about enough money for it with a, another Creep or two. And yeah, he can look to go out and buy it now. I mean, I guess, as you said, just probably better overall for the team, but with these high ground pushes in, you know, they, they, you never know when there's going to be the potential for forcing someone out of position and then stoning them and yeah. kicking them back into your fountain. It's very hard to use the eye. I feel like I've seen True, the yeah. to save the hero, and then right, like, as soon as that stone remnant wears off, like, the hero still dies. Um, but the offensive use of it can be very, very brutal as well. Um, I'm not sure. I doubt. Can you use it through BKB? I don't think so. Because it's not an ultimate, is it? I assume you can't use it on like a BKB bat rider, but I don't. Yeah, I don't think you can stone yeah. a BKB target. That would be You could be use it on the hero that gets lasso, though. Like if someone, if a teammate gets oh, lasso, oh for sure, yeah, you can protect them. Teammate, so. Yeah. But I think they look at it. I think the decision was like we've already got it saved. The OD's already kind of in charge of saving the hero that gets lasso. If they didn't have like a astral or like the vent swap in the past game, they'd probably rate the Ag Scepter higher, but because they've got a, a save spell already, they, they probably think it's lower priority. IG coming out, ready to break this quiet spell. Can they find anything though? That's the question. Paparazzi moving around to get a direct hit with the scan. They know where IG they is, and they know it's likely that there's a lot of them. There. How can they jump in? Well, they are going to find Disruptor on the side of it. Immediately, probably the Boulder Smash. OP comes we'll across. They'll use him up. Yeah, they haven't killed him immediately. The Kyoto offering comes back, holds back three of them. OP looking to super, finally finishes him off. But now the Lasso comes through. And no, the, the attack missed super. He didn't go down. He'll survive, gets the chance to turn around with a Static Storm. And that allows IGV to find OP on the OD. Q, he'll try for the TP. In fact, he's going to make it here. No one really cares about him. He's out back to safety. Hi, Borax. holding back the jug with the Yules. Borax indeed, is he going to escape? Yes, he is. No cancel for the TP. He's out. And at not the fine. end of the day, it's obviously not great for it. They do lose the OD, one of their big cores. Burning was putting on the pressure down bottom. He wasn't actually involved in the majority of that fight. Yeah. I feel like no one wanted to go on the Disruptor. Like, they, they stun him, and then I was like, all right, that should be the free kill at least to start things off right. But... I believe OD didn't want to commit like an offensive blink because he knew all the heroes were waiting on the high ground. So if he blinked in to kill Disrupt, he probably felt he put himself in a, a dangerous position. But he could have done so perhaps just BKB to kill uh, the Disruptor and then take the fight after it. But now without buyback, suddenly IGV are able to perhaps get some damage onto this high ground. Absolutely behind, charging up the epicenter. In he goes, gets the stun onto Paparazzi. Do they have the control to bring him down? He's silenced. Feared up. Can they finish in the damage from burning? It's enough. They'll finish off the Weaver and now looking for more. Borax rolls forward. Dogfights tries for the TP, but he's been used up. Smashed in the face by a boulder. High's also chasing down Super. Super. Yours is up. Goes for the TP. There's no power strike. Super will escape. But the same, of course, can't be said as Bounty Hunter ends up going down, as well as that Weaver. And just some perfect kind of chain stun and control to make sure that they can get rid of this Weaver before he gets any chance to slip away. Yeah, it was very well executed. The Earth Spirit, everyone else, into the Lone Druid, Savage Roar, everything right on that. Didn't get a chance to get out of that one with a time lapse whatsoever. And as a result, IG hold their high ground and will look to take their last out of tower up top, it seems. And burning with the money as well for that Daedalus if he wants to go all in on the purchase. And he's level 20 now, so he can be a bit more aggressive with his push, not not have to be so worried about the respawn time um, if he if he does die like he can kind of play more the front liner for the for the od oh, yeah, 
Because it looks like yeah, with the respawns coming back up, IG aren't going to go too too crazy on this push up top. Yeah, so I'll take the tier two and just back off the easy tower. Jug looking pretty farm, scaling much better. Didn't go for a shadow blade. We can breathe a sigh of relief as they completed the Bissell now and uh, queuing up a, a butterfly. See if he commits to that. May if he sees like an MKB coming or if he thinks Lone Druid's got a lot of. May not feel like the butterfly is going to offer him quite as much. But he's always good against OD, because OD's a hero that doesn't build MKB. If anything, OD's gonna, I mean, OD can build a Bloodthorn, but that's a very, very expensive item to build into when he's not even completed his Shiver's Guard just yet. Well, he's just he's just completed it, but I'll have to work up from, from zero to get to the Bloodthorn. IGV coming out of the base. Weaver pushing the mid. They check out Roshan. It is the longer respawn, so they won't be able to find anything there. Maybe Injulai can find a charge for a kill, though. Borax comes out, places down a ward. And the bear comes up. Afras is you revealing himself just to go in onto the bear. The jump forward Ooh, from Injulai yeah. looking for high, but in fact he doesn't get the last off. Forces forward, but high will oh, be nice protected by the Astro. They'll get the glints back onto Borax. Lays down the magnetize. The big three-man chaotic offering, but can they follow through the damage? Yes, OP blinks forward with the BKB, but he gets bashed up by Paparazzi. The damage is too much from Cicada. As Cicada takes him down, triple kill for the jug. IG getting ripped apart high. Can he get he himself back? No, he's trapped in the static he storm. He's down as well. IG getting caught massively off guard by that smoke from IGV. And as you mentioned, there's no buybacks for them. This could potentially be it for them. What a time for a DD rune. Cicada tore apart the OD with that double damage. That was the perfect rune to have for that fight. And OD, like, he commits in offensively. He, he probably thinks he's fairly tanky now against the Omnisash because he's got the Shiver's Guard. He's got the bonus armor, but... The double damage, as well as just everything else, the control that the rest of the team provided. And they're going to get three melee Raxes off of this, oh, it looks man. like. There's no ultimates. Even when they respawn, they don't have Epicenter. They don't have Kirk Offering. And in July, Lasso's got a short cooldown. He's already oh, straining onto Burning. The Boulder Smash will be there in return. High with the Burrow Strike onto Paparazzi. Paparazzi silenced up as well. But Burning, he's falling low. The Crimson Guard is enough to keep him alive with the Shrine Heal. He is still staying alive here. He will remain fine. The crits Objective come through, flying to the face of the, the, the Disruptor. They've taken one. Burrow Strike on Cicada. Can they finish him off? Paparazzi's come back in, trying to help him out. He'll get the Rax. Now just go for the straight TP out. Do they have any sort of counts so they don't? Don't. Cicada escapes. They get what they came for. Paparazzi trying to get out with the BKB and Shikuchi should be okay. High doesn't get him with the Burrow Strike. Does have the Yules. OP coming through as well. Uh, they try for the Blind Boulder Smash. They've got the gem on High. He's a little out of range. Jump four from Borax. Gets the Silence into the slow. High close to the gap with the Burrow Strike. They will kill the Weaver. But the damage, of course, already being done to their base. Three melee racks down. The range racks as well gone in the middle. IG on a massive back foot now this game as IG Vitality just finding that crucial momentum to do what was always going to be the hardest, talking about breaking that high ground. And it did kind of come, as you said, off the back of in July, starting that fight, finding the lasso, playing very aggressively. And then off the back, IG, they just didn't have the goal for buybacks. IG going to go straight to the Roche pit. They'll secure themselves Aegis and Cheese. May just be like an all-in down mid kind of moment. I don't really feel like they can hold out too much longer. The Jug has scaled so well into the late game. Disruptor as a support has with his Aghanim set. The Bounty Hunter's got Greaves and Pipe. All of all five of these IG Vitality heroes have managed to scale with items. We've got five heroes in five-digit net worth. The supports both have 11, close to 12k net worth. 15k on the Batrider. And this wall looks so poor. looking very far. Poor old Q. I mean, we saw him have a fantastic yeah. game one, if you, if you remember on the Undying. But this game, it's it's not been a lot of glory for the Warlock. Yeah, it's been a much tougher affair, and we'll see what this five period, five minute period has uh, for IG as they have the Aegis and Cheat to play around. But it's going to be very, very tough for them. At least, I mean, I feel like the OD Aegis can be a, make a big difference because that he he just seems to die to the Omni Slash, and perhaps with Aegis in hand, he can come back and use that second life to. Uh, win a fight. They're going to smoke up. They leave the Lone Druid pushing the lane. The rest of the team going to be in charge of winning the fight. Burning very fast. He can zip around the map with those phase boots. Join up with his team at least relatively quick. And they are what going to try and get? jump on this mid lane. There we go. They get the jump immediately onto Zakata. He's controlled. Can they have the damage to finish him off? They'll drop the Sanities. Zakata trying to play through himself away. Can he escape? The invasion oh, is not God. enough. Zakata's down. IG find one. Can they move on for more? Jump forward from high. Eyes onto dog fights. Borax is there as well with the boulder smash. They've found the bounty hunter as well. 
Dogfights, be safe. There's a flame break from Injilai. Dogfights trying to get himself away. Hi. Being very careful about this one. Has got the burrow strike again in a second and with the gem. He should be able to chase him down. In July, comes in though, grabs OP, drags him up to the high ground. OP though, trying to turn. Has the Shiva's guard. The BKB out in July means they can't kill the ban immediately. The OP survives. They try through Yules. High. Still has the burrow strike. We'll get out on the side of it. Dog fights. Keeping eyes on IG. IG feeds if they want to try and chase this down. They're heading Sanky across. Got to be careful here. Sand King is still the one receiving the brunt of the attack. OP jumps back in. Still BKB unavailable for 10 seconds. Smash and silence onto Super. The Yule's up onto OP trying to just withstand the damage that he's doing. Dogfights will be able to get back up to the high ground. Injulai jumps across. Borax is hunting for him high. Falling very, very low. Injulai will chase down the Sand King. Should be able to take him out. He's trying to play his way out of this one with the Sandstone. But the track's out onto him. He actually lived. No, finally drops. Burning. Towards in July, hasn't got the damage to hit him up on the high ground. Ball Borax goes for the TP out, but super cancels him. And indeed, the rat was done from it's Paparazzi. Mega creeps. mega creeps are out amongst all the chaos. The travel. I mean, that was such a chaotic fight. It looked like IG were doing a. Right. I think we was like, this fight's a mess. Let's just go get the range tracks. Let's get megas. Let's try and secure this game. Oh, mid lane Sakali just straight on the wall. Up, wall up, ripped to pieces. Can they kill him though? They get the initial stun into the pro strike. They've got the damage as well. We're burning an OP, but Sakata, late furies. Can they kill this Jug? They'll blink forward. The they Omni really Slash. need him dead. He's got the Omni Slash, but the Crimson Guards are out from Borax. They group together, keep themselves alive. Cicada, though, blinks out immediately post Omni Slash. Up to the high ground. Borax is trying to chase him. The healing ward's out. High jumps forward. They'll get the stun. They'll take Cicada down, but he has buyback. Can they get more? IG need more kills. Super Glimmer Cates runs away. They can't push these lanes out now with the Mega Creeps. Warlock's on base defend duty, but he's a Warlock against Mega Creeps. He's a Warlock with 2k net worth. Yeah, this mid lane at least pushed out a little bit. He's going to pass the cheese over to OP since OP was fairly low. I wonder if he's just going to pop it and go all in for the push. Not really sure there's a good long-term plan for them right now. Yeah, he's just going to eat it. Doesn't want to hold on to it for too much longer and make sure they can get some value out of it. One minute of the ages, so they've still got this 6v5 scenario. Oh man, and this Jug's really is, is available. a push against all odds. There's the jump in. Injilado immediately lassos himself. The Lotus Orb was out on the Sand King. Defensively, Astral trying to keep him alive through the Static Storm. But Burning, no, he's going to fall. Burning's out. Burning's out. 45 seconds. The BKB's come through. Status is a glimpse drop, but Paparazzi gets the chance to time that's back out. He'll survive. Only Jess looks towards OP. OP, he's going to fall. The Aegis is popped. Borax. Can he do anything to help out the OD for round two? OD trying to turn towards in July, but Paparazzi in July super and dog fights around him. OP, can he get anything out of this? He can't. He's down. They do have buybacks though on Borax and on OP, but the base is in shambles. They're trying their best to hold here, IG. They couldn't force out the buyback for Jug. He's going to be fine and ready for this. And this is their last chance, IG. They've got to hold this defense. But they're up against Megas, and they're up against the full five-man push of Vitality. No Sanity's Eclipse, no Epicenter. They're minus key components that they need for their team fight. Jug should be a little careful. He bought Travels, doesn't have buyback. I imagine they make a safe call like, all right, let's just make sure we have buyback before we try and end this game. They really want their wait for the Roche respawn, but at least bare minimum have buybacks. I mean, IG with B were just so composed under pressure there. They got put in a position where Jug got picked off twice in a row. Neither time does he panic and use his buyback. His team make just a very calculated high ground defense. Good use of the lasso. Even using the lasso onto the Lotus Orb isn't a problem because it just it sets up the, the Aghanim Static Storm. So just keeping a hero in place, disabling them, and then the Static Storm gets dropped on top. So well executed. Team fights coming out from IGV, and well, we're just one successful team fight away from the GG being called at this point, and IGV going to Kiev. A huge game, huge series for the two teams. No buybacks available, of course, for IG. They've only got this one life to defend on. Sanity's Eclipse, the only thing they're really missing, and that's down for 50 seconds, but it's almost. Incredibly likely that IGV will push before that's back. And this could be it for IG. There's the jump in. In July, immediately onto the OD. Hi, Burrow strikes away. OP in trouble. Lotus Orb, BKBs. He forces away. Paparazzi 
continues to chase down. The glimpse is there onto Q. Does he get the chance to drop the golem before he goes down? He does. Will get the golem out. In they go as well with the epicenter from high. Starting to force IGV to the side, but they just don't seem to have the damage. ITV will start to back. OP looks towards Super. The Glimmer Cave's there. Borax rolls forward. Do they have the detection? They don't at the moment. Super jukes it out into the trees. OP will still find it, but Super is just wasting their time effectively burning. Savage rolls away one. They have managed to kill off three. Burning managed to get huge amounts of damage done in the mid lane as he picks up the double kill. IG. He's gonna rape you. Oh my god. <laughs> I was he? Like, how, how's he doing so much damage? Oh, like, oh my good. goodness. He has if to burning. If they win this game and make it to the Major because of a burning Rapey alone Druid, that really is going to be quite something. But they're up against all the odds. Can, yeah. can they, they do it? They do that a few more times. Oh that that fight goodness. could have been all over if they got the Static Storm on OD before he beat Keys. That's, that's kind of the call. That's what IGV is saying needs to happen. You've got to get the Lasso into Static Storm. Stop the BKB. But for the most part, IG are holding their own, using their Lincolns, their Lotuses fairly effectively. And... He's buying some time. Oh man. I mean, they do have so many ways here yeah, with, with the Lotus that they can keep burning alive and safe. He's got the Hurricane Pike complete as well. Yeah. They can protect him. It's very hard for IGB to deal with this Lone Druid at the start of the fight, that's for sure. I was and I don't think IG can really push out their lanes. Even with this like Rapier, they're not like going all in down mid. They've... But the problem is, next time IGB is going to have Aegis, Gs. They'll look to secure Roche if they have to. Things will get harder before they get easier for IG. That was the easier of the two high ground defenses. The next one comes with Aegis and Cheese. A very fast Roche respawn as well. Perhaps going to give a, a, a quick Aegis and Cheese to the IG Vitality squad. And no reason really for IGV to force the issue. And they do indeed look towards Roche. Very unlikely that IG could come out and contest this. They've got to keep eyes on the base, keep their base safe. As IGV will have themselves the Aegis. The Cheese as well. He's going to pick up what looks like Toggle. Cheese? Cheese? Anyone want it? Yeah, Angela will take it. And he goes. Picks up the Gorgonzola. And they're ready to go. Yep. So four of the five buybacks on the, the Dire side going to be difficult to, to to win this so you can hold I guess they're not going to use them. that's the thing so one bang can he get the damage out can he focus the key targets against the cheese and an Aegis though it's going to be so hard for IG burning has to be so careful not to get caught out of position everything invested in this lone druid's potential He's just hugging the tier 4 towers. I mean, the good news is you can't be split put. You've just got tier 4 towers to defend. There's only really one left when you've got just a throne left. But bad news is, well, you've got just a throne left to defend. So IGV will just keep spamming the tracks up. All right. There's With the epi, looking for the lead in straight away. He was trying on the sidelines to find in July, but in July, he comes in. He does manage to catch out Burning. Burning has been astraled. Will he be able to actually get his way out? It's the chaotic offering drop. Burning safely back to base. He'll turn around, start to try and dish off the damage, but they've lost the OD. He's out for a full minute and a half. No buyback available on him. Roll four from Borax. They've got to go all in. The stun comes through. They've taken down the disruptor. Burning now turns towards in July. The damage isn't enough to kill him. In July swallows the cheese. He's going to be fine. IG, they've lost two. Burning gets bashed out. Triple kill for Cicada. And IGV will finish off the game. And they have guaranteed themselves at the Kiev Major. IG themselves will get another chance as they get knocked down. But Vitality, a first qualifying team from the Chinese region and an impressive run as, as well. I think uh, Vitality, they were the team right that was in the tiebreakers, wasn't it? In the groups. Yeah, they, uh, were, in the yeah, they were in the tiebreakers. They were the tiebreakers. almost knocked out in the groups. And they just had an incredible run, as you mentioned. They had that streak. They did obviously drop one game to IG in this series. But uh, the, the top team, the top spot out of China, are very, very impressive. And I kind of feel like if you're IG, you, you're probably kicking yourself for letting Injilai get his bat. That bat did a lot from the start of the game to the very end of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where if they're willing to first stage pick it, it's like, man, should we really a first stage bandit? But it, very much like he played so well in that bat, right? He created so many openings and opportunities for them. Uh, as much as 
high got done in the the laning stage his sanking kind of fell off very hard i feel like his impact on this game did not reflect his fantastic laning stage whereas in july and like some of the igv guys they had a rough laning stage but like, the batrider was such a big playmaker this game cicada on the jug he kind of made up for that lackluster game one on the jug where he went for the shadow blade build he did absolutely fantastic this time around so all across the board igv really really stepped it up I mean, Super got tons of fun with his Disruptor. This is this is kind of like the classic Bounty Hunter game, where you, you just fight around the track, you get kills, everyone gets money, everyone gets items, and then everyone gets to, to get a lot out of those items. Absolutely, but there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. IGV, your victors here in the first final of China. There'll be more China action 